is spring, the tide's low, and I'm on the hunt. Poking the shores of Outer House Sound, looking for tide pools. I'm looking for tide pools, the hollows in shoreline rock that hold back ocean water as the tide falls, because they are little oases of active marine life in the dry, dry desert of the inner tidal zone. I love tide pools because inside them, the ocean is still. Tide pools allow me to get a close-up view of the tiny creatures of the seafloor world. I've found a beautiful tide pool big enough to float in. And there's lots of seaweed in it, which is new for me. I look down and I can see some bare rocks to place my feet on without hurting anything. And gingerly launch. And I am just stunned. A dazzling forest of seaweed golds, greens and reds. Some seaweeds I know from elsewhere. There is a golden kelp with a single blade on a short stem. And the brilliant greens of the paper-thin sea lettuce and wireweed with fine golden branches and small grape-like floats. And a finely branched, fuzzy-looking red seaweed covered with oxygen bubbles that reminds me that all these seaweeds are producing oxygen by photosynthesis, even as I watch. In fact, half the oxygen we breathe is produced by algae in our oceans, and shoreline seaweeds are an important part of the algae family. The cleft in the rock below me is filled with purple sea stars. Purple sea stars have made a strong recovery in Outer House Sound from the wasting disease that killed so many sea stars of all types back in 2013. I drift on, cruising over the treetops of the seaweed forest. A tiny jelly catches my attention the gentle pulse of its translucent bell pushing it here and there. Its tentacles dangle, waiting to sting an immobilize tiny plankton. I lay down at the shallow end of the tide pool. A carpet of blue mussels stretches out before me. They are a dominant animal in our inner tidal zones. Mussels cover the shores I typically paddle along but I rarely get a chance to see them up close, underwater, going about their daily business. And my camera has a great macro lens that allows me to zoom right in on their tiny lives. Mussels are filter feeders, sucking in seawater and feeding on the tiny plankton and bits of algae that they can strain out. I get so close I can see the two siphons that operate inside their shells, which direct the flow in and out. So I keep my eye on a particle floating past a mussel. Sure enough, it's pulled right inside, down the hatch. These millions and millions of mussels along our shores play in a really important role filtering our ocean, removing bacteria and even toxins and heavy metals. I notice right under my camera a shore crab. It's eating small bits of algae caught in the white stringy threads that are everywhere between the mussels. Threads that the mussels create to attach themselves to rock. And just a few feet away is a green sea urchin. I'm blown away by just how much life is right here under my nose. The urchin's green spines catch my eyes first. But then among the spines I see purple tube feet waving about seemingly to explore whatever is nearby. I zoom in close. It amazes me that an urchin can coordinate all this movement of feet and spines. A little further away on a steeper wall of the tide pool, another urchin is descending the slope. I watch it move, propelled by some mysterious force. I turn the urchin beside me upside down to find dozens of tube feet waving at me. These are what move urchins. 
In the center is the urchin's mouth, so I zoom in. The urchin has a series of beak-like teeth, which can bite off chunks of algae or scrape off encrusting material. As I watch, the urchin slowly rights itself, pulling itself over with its many tube feet. I push off and move along. I find one of my favorites, a sea slug or sea lemon as it's called. It's on the hunt for sponges that encrust the rock. I watch its steady pace, smelling odors through its two sensory stalks up front, while breathing through lacy gills on its backside. It's so intriguing to me that this snail has evolved to live without a protective shell, instead employing a pungent smell and bitter taste to ward off predators, and a distinctive color that acts as a warning flag. Nearby is a cluster of purple sea stars on a shadowed wall, with a litter of empty mussel shells below. Purple sea stars prey voraciously on mussels, and in doing so create space for other species that otherwise would be crowded out by the mussels. Because of this benefit, sea stars are considered a keystone species that maintain biodiversity in this intertidal world. Within the sea star cluster is something I've just learned about. This flower-like yellow funnel with wavy walls is actually the eggs of a sea lemon sea slug, like the one I just saw. Ahead, a purple sea star is on the move. Up close, I can see the tube feet on the leading tip of one arm sensing the waters. The arm moves to a rock wall, where the suckers on its tube feet reach ahead, attach, and pull it along. I float over a carpet of mussels with scattered patches of green sea lettuce. I notice for the first time just how abundant the green sea urchins are. In the center of the pool is a bare area with many urchins, each with a piece of sea lettuce. Urchins graze voraciously on algae and they are clearly dining on sea lettuce here. Nearby there is a sharp boundary between the sea lettuce forest and urchin covered bare rock. I look more closely and realize there's a line of urchins clear-cutting their way into the forest. The urchins are converting algae forest to barrens. Urchin barrens have become more common in Howe Sound ever since the great die-off of the giant sunflower sea stars, the urchins' top predator during the wasting disease that hit our coast in 2013. Some types of sea stars in Howe Sound have already recovered well from the wasting disease. And that, that's very encouraging. And I do look forward to the return of giant sea stars to restore balance with the urchins. Well, I'm getting a bit chilled, so it's time to go. I head back through the seaweed forest. <laughs> I get out just buzzing. What an hour it's been. I float along in my kayak the memories of it all swirling around me. So much extraordinary life. So many little stories. So packed together. No wonder there's so much other life feeding along our shores. There's so much to eat. I drift on. The inner tidal zone is its own world, full of tiny treasure. So easy to overlook and yet so easy to find. <laughs>